What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are putting together yet another PC build of the month. This time around it's going to be an HTPC or home theater PC. It's going to be for a family friend. His name is Ron and he is my mother-in-law's boyfriend. He works for LAPD. He's a really solid dude, stand-up guy. He'll never give me a ticket because he knows me. He actually confronted me the other day and I could tell there was some sadness in his eyes. I was like, Ron, you look troubled, man. What's, what's bothering you? And he said, Kyle, I just, I don't know. I feel like there's something missing in my life. And I was like, HTPC. And he was like, yes, yes. So after I helped Ron have this epiphany, we immediately started talking about what kind of parts he might use for an HTPC of his own. And what we found was, well, it's all back there. Why don't we go check it out? Now, really quick, before we dive into the parts here, I did want to mention this, even though it's fairly obvious, that Run is going to be using this PC for home theater needs, such as Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, you know, media streaming and things like that, browsing YouTube and whatnot. He's not going to be gaming much, but uh, more on that in a bit. All right, so for starters, the case that we're building in today is the Node 202 from Fractal Design. And if you guys watch the channel often, you, you've probably seen me do a build or two in this chassis before. Uh, first of which was my dad's PC, and the second one was the Go Anywhere, Do Anything rig. And uh, I think it's just a really great HTPC chassis, especially because it's got a super slim profile and it can be oriented either vertically or horizontally. So depending on how much room or what kind of configuration you have in your entertainment center at home, uh, it can really fit pretty much anywhere, which is really nice. It also comes included with an Integra SFX 450 watt power supply, uh, which isn't modular or anything, but it's small form factor. Uh, it is 80 bronze plus certification. Uh, certified, I should say, uh, which is also nice to see. It's got two USB 3.0 ports at the front, which should be very convenient for a home theater PC. And it does actually have some decent ventilation for a smaller case. And it does have a full slot for a graphics card up to like 10 or 11 inches or something like that. So uh, even though Ron's not gonna be doing any gaming, if he did wanna do some gaming, he could swap out the video card that I'm giving him for a more sizable one in the future if he wants to get his game on. For our CPU, we've got the Core i5-6500 from Intel. And obviously this is a lock skew, so no overclocking here, but Ron's not really a super hardcore tech enthusiast, and he really has no interest or need to overclock anyway, so uh, this is a good way to save some cash while still delivering a decent amount of performance here on our 1151 Skylake platform. We've also got a pretty decent cooler here. Actually, I've just been told that it's decent. I've never used this cooler before, but I have used a cryo rig cooler, the H7. This is the C7. This is the low profile version, and it is supposed to be pretty damn good for the price. Uh, it's on Amazon right now for about 30 bucks, and uh, there aren't that many great options in terms of low profile, super low profile coolers, because I think the limit on the, uh, the height clearance for the Note 202 is like 50 something millimeters, but this one is like 47 or something like that. However, this cooler for the price is known to deliver a decent amount of uh, thermal dissipation uh, for a chip like the Core i5-6500 there. Now over here, we have the Z170N Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. And as you can tell from the name, it does uh, feature Wi-Fi, which is really handy, especially because I don't know exactly know what kind of setup Ron is gonna have at his home, if he's gonna be able to directly connect it via ethernet, or if he might actually need to use a wireless connection. So it's nice to have that, super convenient for small form factor builds. Uh, also, what's the point of really going Z170 if we have a lock skew processor? We might as well save some change and uh, go with a H170. It's a bit cheaper, no, no, supporting for, no support for overclocking, but like I said, we're not really going to need it for this system, so uh, that's, that's a good option there. Also, we've got 8 gigs of RAM. This is HyperX Fury, DDR4, of course. Let me see what the speed is here. The speed... Zoom in, cow. Uh, but probably 1866 or something similar. This is only like 34, 35 bucks on Amazon, so I can't imagine it's like super fast or anything, but obviously going to get the job done, no problem. For storage, we have the PNY CS1311 SSD, 480 gigs. Now this is the only drive that's going in Ron's system today, and the reason why that is, is because he's also planning on picking up a WD MyCloud NAS, or Network Attached Storage. I don't know why I called it NAS, that sounds really weird. It's a NAS, it's a NAS, yo. Uh, so he's really not going to need too much internal storage other than this 480 gig drive, which I think is going to be plenty. Uh, even if he were to potentially game in the future, as unlikely that might be, uh, he still has some room there as well on his boot drive. So uh, with, with that said, we, let's move on to the graphics cards. Now, I did say that uh, Ron is not a gamer. He does not game at all. Uh, he might game in the future, but I just wanted to get him situated and make sure that he's got all the horsepower that he might need for the future. So uh, just future-proofing here, we've got two GTX 1080s. The reason why we have two of them, obviously they won't fit in the Node 202, is because I simply just want your guys' opinion of which one I should give him. So there's the EVGA for the win, GTX 1080, and we've got the Gaming X from MSI. Both of them are 8 gigabyte models, so 8 gigs of GDDR5X, and I am totally messing with you because I am actually going to be putting in this GTX 750 Ti I would never give Ron a GTX 
1080. <laughs> you guys, oh, I got you. I got you good. Oh, I would have loved to see the look on your faces. Oh, Kyle, such a troll, such a troll. But yeah, I'm totally bullshitting. Uh, I'm going with this card. This is the, like I said, the GTX 750 Ti. This is a black edition from Gigabyte. Uh, this is actually the card that I used in my HTPC back in the day, maybe uh, two years ago or so. Um, but it's got, it's got, it's got some really decent performance. If Ron ever wanted to do some like light 1080 gaming, uh, you know, at high to medium quality settings, I'm pretty sure that this would handle it no problem. So um, I think it's going to be, it's, it's going to serve him well for, for his needs for sure. Obviously it can handle like all the HTPC stuff uh, and even some gaming in the future as well. But those are all the parts that we will be using. Actually, not those. Let me put these back on my shelf. And in case you guys were curious, the total cost of this build came out to around 650 bucks on Amazon at the time of filming this video, but that does not include the complimentary GTX 750 Ti that I am giving him uh, out of the kindness of my heart. I'm such a, such a nice person. If, if you were to pick one of these up used on eBay, it's probably gonna cost you about 100 bucks or so. Uh, so if you wanna factor that into the build, maybe you're looking at 750, uh, add in a copy, a license of Windows, then maybe an $850 HTPC. But again, it's going to be really, really super fast and last him for a long long time so on that note i can see myself in the reflection of the monitor which means i clearly did not plan out this video as well as i should have so uh let's just ignore that for now and build this computer All right, here's the build. Oh, it's so sexy. So, um, this is uh, this is the PC. It's running. Things are looking good. Listen to the cooler. It's pretty quiet. You can you can hear it a little bit, but Windows isn't installed yet, and I haven't tweaked the fan curve or anything like that. Um, but uh, looks like it's moving some air. Can kind of feel can feel some of the air going through. And you know, cable management is always kind of the bane of small form factor cases like this one, but I, I've built in the Node 202 enough times to kind of just get a feel for where the cable should go. And so you can see I've kind of got them routed in between the power supply and the motherboard, at least uh, our eight pin EPS and uh, actually, I guess four pin EPS. There's only a four pin uh, CPU connector on the motherboard and our 24 pin ATX. Uh, they're just kind of routed between this uh, canal here, uh, between those components. And then we've got it all tied down 
right down there so it's not it's not bouncing around or anything i was uh, very happy with how this turned out there's plenty of room for activities right around here uh, if ron wanted to he could install a 120 millimeter intake fan right here or exhaust who knows uh, and even one below the video card as well however i don't think he's going to be putting much of a load on this thing uh, considering he's not really gaming at all uh, but in the off chance that he does decide to game later down the line he will have that option to uh, include a bit more airflow. The SSD went in no problem. It's just chilling there right now. Oh, and I just, uh, while I was building, I realized that this motherboard has an M.2 slot behind it. And I'm pretty sure it's just a SATA slot, but that's still pretty cool for uh, for being like a little H H170 board. I was pretty surprised to find that M.2 slot, especially because if Ron wanted to upgrade his storage capacity in the future or add another drive later down the line, even if he doesn't know a damn thing about computers or building them, he can still install an M.2 drive relatively easy uh, without much guidance. So uh, that's, that's really convenient for him. And uh, I think that's pretty much it y'all pretty solid system let me know what you guys think about this htpc in the comments below and toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it this has been the pc build for the month of august i'm kyle with awesome sauce network thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon and i will see you all in the next video Bye.